This Is Your Life for me was um, was obviously a great surprise. I, I became a bit suspicious on the day because my late wife said, well, now we're going up to, to London, you ought to wear a tie, dear. She said, it's one of these uh, lunchtime things, I believe. Uh, a car came and picked me up. I said, well, I'll see you up there. She said, yes, I'm not coming, just waiting for a friend. But I saw two cars parked outside and, and I thought, oh, well, I wonder what these are. One was a taxi and the other one was a, a big private car. Uh, anyway, I got up to to uh, London, and um, they said, "Oh, this is at the Imperial War Museum." I didn't, didn't even know what we were going to do in in London today, and uh, the driver said, "Well, I'll I'll wait for you, so I don't think it'll be long." And then the chap came along and he said, "You don't mind me just, you know, I'm just going to wire you up for sound." I got it in 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 the, the interior of the building. They showed me into a smallish room. There were a lot of f- folks there and dressed up in the 1940s gear you know they said yes we just want you to do a little introduction to a, a film we're doing uh, eventually they said yes well i think we're ready now so i just started to say something and um i i, I turned around and realized there was somebody right at the side of me and it was ian lavender and he said you probably seen this gentleman before and i turned this way and it was michael asp and he said bill pertwee this is your life <laughs> And uh, from then on, it was it was a great day and met a lot of people. So it was great, yes, it was a marvellous, marvellous day. Well, I certainly remember Bernard Cribbins, a great, great old mate of mine. I'd worked with him in, in plays for Ray Cooney, some farces, and um, uh, uh, Jimmy Perry was there, um, Frank Williams, Clive Dunn, uh, it was it, it, it was it was great, you know. Yes, it was it was really really a, a great day. Uh, I I I really just wondered why uh, afterwards why why I had become the subject of of uh, this is your life. I really one got to go back on things and 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 you thought well yes I suppose I have done quite a lot. It was a good, fun occasion. Once I'd got over the the feeling of, of, oh, what's going on, for goodness sake, you know, I'd been asked to wait and wait and so forth, and not realising, of course, they were getting prepared for this introduction, they said, that I was going to do a, a, about a, a 1940s film. And, and, of course, my wife was there, and, and uh, uh, my son and, uh, always... Then I realised that they, they had been taken up to London uh, in, in one or two of those cars that were waiting... When I, when I was driven up there, sir, it all sort of explained itself then. I think This Is Your Life has become one of those programmes that people, people have, have used as part of their storytelling when they've been talking to their friends, relations, whatever it is. Because of the popularity of the show, pretty well everybody would, would tune in to see it regularly, I think. It, it became like Sunday Night at the Palladium, which Bruce Forsyth did, but somehow or other... The title, This Is Your Life, people will still talk about now because of that, that wording, This Is Your Life. I think that uh, it, it um, thought, well, this is marvellous. All the things I've sort of been involved with has all come out in, in almost in, in, in one evening when I was the subject. And, and how marvellous that uh, so many people are here who I've worked with uh, during the years. And, and uh, so it, it, to me it was a, a culmination of... Uh, of, of just having my life uh, sort of brought into view with all my friends there.